it with music, beautiful music. Hello, I'm Fred Miller, and this is yet another one of my lectures in song. And before we launch into the life and career of the astounding Fred Astaire, a little information about me. I was born in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I had a wonderful classical piano teacher. I was into, uh, of course, the great classical composers, but also the, not just their music, but also the, the lives of the composers and the history of the times as well. And that went on right until my 13th birthday, uh, right on that day that I turned into a teenager, the Beatles arrived in America, and so my musical taste expanded to include the great rock songs of the 60s, and that went on through high school till the summer after I graduated when I hitchhiked with a friend from New Mexico to the Woodstock Festival. I'm even in the poster there. Uh, but that was it for rock music. That really was the peak of the rock age. I was due to go to college that fall. I left very shortly thereafter, went very briefly, got a VW Bug, traveled the country, and then settled in Greenwich Village. And at some point, somebody gave me an album of Ella Fitzgerald singing Cole Porter. And here I am, the world of Gershwin, Porter, Kern, Rogers, Berlin, Fred Astaire, Judy Garland, Ethel Merman, Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby. I uh, came up with the notion of doing lectures in song, each one being a profile of a great personality or some aspect of American popular song. I started initially with six. I really thought that was going to be it, uh, six programs. And then I kept adding. And now to date, I have 75 different lectures in song, each described in detail at fredmillermusic.com. The program at hand, what a subject, uh, Fred Astaire. Um, words come to mind, um, class, elegance, grace, substance, style, humility. Have you seen the well-to-do up and down Park Avenue on the famous thoroughfare with their noses in the air? High hats and arrow collars, white spats and lots of dollars, spending every dime for a wonderful time. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? Putting on the Ritz. Different types who wear a day coat, pants with stripes and cut away coat, perfect fits. Putting on the Ritz. Dressed up like a million dollar trooper. Trying hard to look like Gary Cooper, super duper. Come, let's mix where Rockefellers walk with sticks and umbrellas in their midst. Putting on the Ritz, putting on the Ritz, putting on the Ritz. Frederick Austerlitz, uh, born May 10th, 1899, in Omaha. His father was Austrian, his mother was Alsatian. Uh, he had one older sister, that was Adele, better known as Deli. Um, Adele was a live wire. She was full of talent and vitality, and the mother, quite an extraordinary person herself, I guess, really wanted only the best for her kids, so she picked up, uh, picked up roots, pulled up roots there from Omaha, and took Deli with little Fred along uh, to get the best training possible in New York. Uh, she knew she had one talented kid, but then lo and behold, it turned out she had two very talented kids. She had a show business team right there on her hands, and they uh, grew right into it very quickly. They devised, uh, they were given an act called uh, The Wedding Cake, and uh, they went right into the show business as uh, they made their debut in Keyport, New Jersey, a summer resort in November of 1905. Fred would have been six, Deli would have been eight or nine. And uh, that would lead to bookings throughout New York, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, a uh, 20-week contract, $150 a week, very good money at the turn of the century. Uh, they went back to Omaha briefly just for just to revel in their triumph and then went right back out. Uh, there were quite a, is a great contrast, what a real chemistry between the two. Uh, Deli was the practical joker and Fred was all business, serious and everything. Deli said though when he was off dancing by himself, he sort of invented things. I was the clown, I mean, I like to be funny. I couldn't be bothered learning all those steps. Well, they were doing fine and then till the Jerry Society sort of you know swooped in. That was a society for the prevention of cruelty to children and so 
they didn't want children to be exploited for good reason. But uh, anyway, even the kids in show business were considered to be exploited. So they had to lay low. They had actually two normal years uh, as just as regular kids in Weehawken, New Jersey, right across from New York, where they could continue all their, their training and then go to school and like regular kids. There's a picture of them in a classroom here. They're already show business veterans with all these other kids. Very different, I'm sure. But anyway, they had outgrown the wedding cake. That was the act that they'd used as kids. And the mother paid $1,000, an extraordinary amount of money for a new act for them. And they went right out again when it was time, about 1911. And uh, they were playing vaudeville and uh, learning all everything they could and playing on the bill with Bill Bojangles Robinson and uh, Eddie Cantor and what have you. They, at they, uh, one point... Uh, Fred met a guy who worked in Tin Pan Alley. This is a guy in New York about his age, and uh, the guy was aspiring to be a composer. And uh, they discussed, the, talked about their dreams and said, well, maybe one day you'll write a show for me. Well, that kid's name was George Gershwin. It would happen, as it turned out. Well, they were ready now to... Uh...